All right, folks. Look at you. Welcome to another episode of Wild Guide to Wild Herbs and Edibles. Now, in this episode, we're going to be looking at the wild carrot family. Oh. So, the wild herb that we'll be using or looking at today is sweet Sicily or also known as Mura's Adorata. But before we get into that, I want to show you some books that I've brought along. Just to give you an idea of, you know, how to identify plants and things like that. Now these are guidebooks telling you what the plant is used for, uh, how to apply it, um, medicinal properties of the plant, everything. I brought a couple along, as I say, just to give you an idea of how to get started in the world of identifying plants. They also mentioned in the first episode that there is courses that you can do. Um, I learned a little bit from a great bloke, absolutely smashing bloke, very knowledgeable, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, all I can say is just one spot on bloke, a very nice gentleman, and he is Sean Thompson. Now once in a while he holds a little gathering, you can book a ticket and then he'll take you around along the riverside and show these plants, what you can use them for, things like that. So I'll try and keep you posted if he ever starts another another gathering because he's just had a little one not so long ago and uh, the baby's taking up <laughs> most of his time so but I'll try and keep you posted. There was also online courses. Um, there's a gentleman called Paul Kirtley runs an online course uh, tree and plant identification. Um, apparently it's one of the biggest comprehensive guides uh, going. I've never actually looked into it, but I do know he is doing this course. I'll put the details up for you now. There's also another one, another book that I haven't brought out here. Uh, Food for Free by James, was Jim Collins. That's a good book. And you, it's a very small pop of book. You go around, pop around, and pick the plants, I can find them. Let's find some Murus adorato or adorata. Wunderbar, I found some. 
Right, ladies and gentlemen. Right. This is Sweet Sicily. Now these fine ridges in the stalk. Carrot like leaves. Here's some more here. And you can quite easily distinct Sweet Sicily because of the white patches you get on the leaves themselves. There's not many on this one, but you see the odd patch of white. Looks like it's been splattered with paint. Yeah, you can see the white patches better on that piece there. You can see the white patches. Now, Sweet Sicily, there is a poisonous look like. And that is poison hemlock. But I will be showing you that later on and how to identify which one's which. And to be honest, you can't really misidentify sweet Sicily because soon as you pick a leaf, smell it, straight away you get that strong aniseed smell. Oh, that's strong. Can you remember the aniseed balls that you used to eat when you were kids? It smells just like that. And even tastes like it. Here's a better one where you see the splashes of white. There. there. Not only have the stems grooves in them, little grooves running down, but they're also slightly hairy. I can show you the beers. Yeah. You get a brushing of colour on the, the base of the stem going up, but that's about it. No other red blotches or anything at all, just the hairy stalk. And they used to say they used to use this to protect you against the plague in the olden days. <laughs> now it contains both vitamins A and C, calcium, iron, potassium, and essential oils containing antimicrobial, antifungal, and antioxidant, antioxidant. It's the oils that's the most um, helpful to your body. Now, this is a great substitute for sugar. Very low calories in it. See the splashes of white there? And it's a great tonic for the elderly. See, somebody's been ill, an elderly, pa elderly patient or whatever has gone through surgery and they're recovering. Well, you can make a tonic with this and it helps the patient recover. Gives them that little boost. Helps them to build strength and stamina. So, Look at the stalks. The stalks of the leaves are round, hairy. The stalk has ridges and hairy. Has no red blotches at all, none whatsoever. Make sure there is no blotches, red blotches, because if there is a void like the plague, it's just me, me phone. <laughs> now, 
This plant is from the Umbephalia family. In other words, the flowers like umbrella. Um, it's the chemical anethol that gives this herb its distinctive taste of aniseed. As says, you can use it for herb, like a tonic for the elderly who's feeling weak, you know. Um, it's a diuretic, treat your urinary infections and help to clean your, your kidneys out. It's a slight laxative as well. It can help to treat blood pressure. The root, the leaves, can be mushed up, made into paste, and then put in a wound, you know, if you've uh, been injured or anything like that, and it's it's infected, you know, pussy, that can help. <laughs> uh, it's antiseptic properties. Uh, it can be used to treat tuberculosis, the flies are all over. It's an expectorant, helping you to promote phlegm and um, helping with the sore throat and open the airways, things like that. It can also help with their asthma as well. Some more over here, and I think I might have, yeah, I found some seeds. Those are the seeds of Sweet Sicily. You can actually smell the aniseed around here. And apparently you can get these seeds. You can chew on them. Boy, oh, that's strong. Best to get them when they're younger. A little tough days, but. Mm. Beautiful. I think I'm going to collect some of these seeds and harvest them for next year and grow some in the garden. It's also an amenagogue which helps you through your menstrual cycle, you know, helps with period pains and things like that. But I advise pregnant women, obviously, not to take this. Oh, and one more thing. If you ever gassed up and you've got terrible, terrible, and I mean terrible wind, this will help you with your, your wind problem. If you're farting like there's no tomorrow, this is a plant that you need. <laughs> That was not me. Ooh. Now I'm taking this costadier, I'm going to be cooking with it. Also used for gout as well. So Rob, I know you suffer bad from gout yet. I have the herb that you need. <laughs> now, sweet Sicily, you can literally chew on it. Just like celery. It's got that lovely aniseed taste. And it's great in sweets like um, rhubarb pies. Stuff like that. And it's a great compliment with lamb and that's what we'll be cooking today.
Look at that. Bon appetit. Holy smoke. That is delicious, folks. That is beautiful. Wow, the texture, the taste, the aniseed with the with the the lamb. Oh wow. Well, I enjoyed that. But now we're moving on. Because I said earlier, Sweet Sicily, it does have a poisonous look like. And that is poison hemlock. Now I'm going to show you a sample of poison hemlock. But we'll have to travel it because they, I know for a fact there's none in these woods. But I think I know where there might be some. So we we'll best get moving. Now we're looking for hemlock now. Poison hemlock, also known as Corneum maculatum. Now the red splots on the stem are supposed to be the victims, the victims' blood of all the people that's been poisoned by it. Another folklore story says that it was grown, this plant, poison hemlock was grown underneath Jesus' cross when he was crucified. And the stem was splattered by Jesus' blood. Now, 30 minutes after consuming this plant, you'll feel dizzy, uh, nauseous, sick, vomiting, Numbness of the body, powerlism, you basically, it will paralyse you and eventually it will paralyse your respiratory system so you won't be able to breathe. It doesn't put you to sleep, it doesn't make you drowsy, so basically while your body's shutting down, your brain is still functioning and still awake. What a horrible way to go. It's also the main reason why a lot of children back in the olden days died of this plant because during the war, as you know, times was tough and the kids used to make pea shooters out of stalks of plants what they didn't realise was they were picking up the hemlock and using their stalks so you can imagine straight in their mouth um, and you know the rest now it does have its medicinal purposes believe it or not Ancient tribes used to use it, especially the Klalam. The tribes used to use it as a mild sedative, sedative. and you can imagine you're taking small quantities, the paralyzism, the, the paralyzing effect it has. You know, if you take that small amount, it will make as if you're sedative sort of thing, you know, for your body. And the Klalam women, they used to get the root and they used to rub it on the body to attract men. God, I'm imagine, imagine them, them getting a, a nasty rush, I tell you. Oh, hang on. No, it's not. I thought it was. I've just found some. And there's that plant there. Now we can't grow at least six foot. As you can see, 
It is from the Umbrophilia family, the umbrella shape leaves and flowers, sorry. Very similar to Sweet Sicily, but the seeds is different. The seeds you don't have, the long pod shaped type seeds. These seeds is more of a different shape. Each flower has five petals, and you can see the blotches. That is what you're looking for, folks. If you do not have a plant that smells, that doesn't smell of aniseed, and has blotches like this, you have poison hemlock. Do not touch it. It has a smooth stalk, waxy feel to it, no hairs. So you can see there's big differences between them. See all the blotches on them. Now there's been loads and loads of cases of people dying from this plant. Children thinking they've got cow parsley, been munching on it. Uh, one gentleman, he had that much, his body, his whole body just went into convulsions and everything and he was still conscious of what was happening to his body and just to prove what he died of they did do an autopsy and found a great amount of hemlock in his stomach so I'll go over here like and as you can see the carrot shaped leaves Even the juice, get it on your skin and it can burn, blister, cause a rash. Now with, when you're smelling the plant, sometimes even the smell, some, it has been known that the smell can give you an allergic reaction in your throat, just off the fumes of the juice. It's also associated with um, witchcraft. Now I don't know if you know, but some poisonous plants is poisonous to us, but not to animals. So that goes vice versa. It's like chocolate. We can eat chocolate, but dogs can't. So birds love hemlock, and it's not toxic to them. And there's one case where these hunters have been out, shot a bird, put in the freezer, and unfortunately that bird had been eaten on poison hemlock and the seeds. And when they come to cook it, it was laced with hemlock. After three hours of eating it, one person died of respiratory failure, and the other two died of kidney failure later on. And the Greeks used to use it to poison and kill the, uh, the prisons that was like sort of on death row. So you can see it's a deadly plant. So please folks, if you find a plant like this, red blotches and then don't even think about trying it. Give it a wide berth and leave it well alone. Right then. Let's have a rundown of these two plants. On the left we have poison hemlock, and on the right we have sweet sicily. Now you can see that both stems are hollow. The hemlock on the left has a white pythia inside to the stalk compared to the one on the right. 
The hemlock on the left is a lot sturdier, the stem is a lot more woodier compared to the Sweet Sicily which is soft and easily breakable. The blotches that you can see on hemlock is absent with Sweet Sicily. Here's another cross section of hemlock and Sweet Sicily. Now the leaves are similar. On the left we have the poison hemlock, same type shape leaves, and on the right the sweet sicily. You do get the red blotches on the stems of the leaves on the hemlock. You can see the leaves are a lot smaller and daintier compared to the sweet sicily. The sweet sicily leaf is a lot bigger, more luscious and greener. Also, you do not get the white splashes on the hemlock leaves. Now, the flowers of both plants both have the umbel shape and have five petals. Here is a hemlock and this one, the sweet Sicily. Oh, it's warm. Well that concludes episode 2 of the Wild Guide to Wild Herbs and Edibles. Now remember folks, if you are not sure, do not touch. You're looking for sweet Sicily, the scented smell of aniseed and hairy stalks, no red blotches. That's what you're looking for. Big carrot shaped leaves. You will notice that the hemlock the leaves are a lot smaller. Flowers more or less look the same so all I can say is be careful out there folks. Anyway thanks for watching I'm Mick and I'm the Sagittarian. I'll see you in another episode very soon. Take care folks.